the umpire has signalled that he will start both of these scullers in just a few minutes. Just a few moments, should I say. So, Napkova on the left, the Dutch woman Van der Moelen on the right. And uh, Van der Moelen goes into a headwind straight away. I think that uh, left-hand station is a little bit more protected, Sarah. Yes, yeah, certainly in those early stages. And uh, Van Moelen just struggling with her steering in this early stage. We've seen a few crews struggle with the water just near the island there. We've, we've talked about it before. This is a living, moving body of water. And, and there's a lot to know about it, particularly in the single skull. Uh, it can be extremely difficult and takes a long time, many years, to really master this course. And, and I'm sure every time you row on it, there's something new to learn. Uh, but the single skull, a particularly difficult boat to row here. Uh, but definitely copping a little bit of a headwind early on there is the Dutch sculler closest to us, uh, Van der Mullen. So you can see the uh, applause from the crowds. They're, they're just packed all the way down the course. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I had to fight my way through to where we're doing the commentary just by... Uh, Henley Bridge. They really are rammed in this afternoon and you can see it's a fantastic day out on the river as the Olympic champion Mirka Natkova from the Czech Republic takes a significant amount of water off of Janka van der Moelen, the Dutch sculler. And look at the finish on Napkova. She's a three-time Olympian. She's the Olympic champion. She's been just off the podium for the last couple of years, but we're seeing her return to the top form that she was in at the London Olympic Games as she's in her build-up towards Rio 2016 Olympics. But look at that finish. So much power, so much uh, momentum with the body into the finish of the stroke, and she's just sitting back away into this head breeze over the Dutch sculler now, opening up a clear water lead. So Sarah is waxing lyrical about Mirka Nakova, and if you're just tuning in, she is the Olympic champion at the top of your picture to the farthest right. She has now, well, over a length of clear water lead, which is a significant lead even at this early stage of the race. We're yet to reach the first checkpoint of this race. It's not like 500 metres every, like in a 2,000 metre race. They have marks on the bank, and uh, she's yet to reach the first of those famous Henley marks, which is called the barrier which is this kind of uh, little gate to stop cattle getting out and through it. It's the barrier to cattle, and Mirka Natkova is uh, going through the barrier with a very strong, healthy lead. And we can see the Dutch sculler on screen in front of us there, Janneke van der Moelen. She's 28 years old, 186 centimetres tall. She only started rowing back in 2007. Uh, and she's represented the Netherlands a couple of times now. In 2013, she was in the women's eight that placed six at the World Championships. And in 2014, in the women's four that won the B final at the World Championships. So not much time in sculling internationally, more of a sweep rower. But uh, here she's made it through to the semi-final. But I mean, what a tough ask going up against the Olympic champion. It must be a nerve wracking experience to look yeah. across and see that. Nerve-wracking experience on one hand, but, you know, I, I, sh she is an amazing woman, the Dutch woman. We're seeing her now on the left of the screen. She's written a book called uh, Super Snell Herstel, which uh, I'm sure my Dutch is right, which means super quick recovery for peak performance. It's a nutrition book. It's sold almost 4,000 copies. And I think she's really enjoying life. I think she's enjoying the sport. And for me, for Van der Moelen to be in the same race as the Olympic champion, I mean, if I could have ever raced a single, I, I was never that good against the Olympic champion. I mean, I would have that a picture on my wall forever, Sarah, because I'd just say, I race the Olympic champion. And that's what it's like in this sport. And uh, to go up against this woman from the Czech Republic, Mia Konatkova, um, is a privilege. And uh, even though she's paying for it in these headwind conditions. Yeah, it really is an incredible experience in both the men's and the women's single, the caliber of these athletes and to have the, the chance to go head to head against uh, some of the best rowers in the world. Uh, we'll see Mahe Drysdale in the diamonds. We've got Nurkinakova here uh, in the single. And um, yeah, just like you say, it's a privilege and a very, very unique experience that I'm sure every competitor here will relish. And to make it through to Saturday uh, is really a very impressive feat. Yeah, just take a look at those shots. You can see the river traffic never stops here. And of course, everybody wants to come on the Henley Reach and watch the regatta. In the 19th century, there were thousands and thousands of boats on the Henley Reach. Less now, but you can see the washes, the wakes of the craft. They do try and keep their speed under control, but of course they'll disturb the scullers, and it makes this race 
all the more difficult. And I think Sarah Natkova, she's not been in the best of form. She did win the Bled World Cup, but uh, she came up against Kim Crow, of course, your former crewmate, the Aussie, who was in blistering form in the uh, Varese World Cup. And I think Natkova realises she's got a real job to do, which is why her performance in this regatta is so important. Yes, a lot of these international rowers will be competing at the Lucerne, the third World Cup uh, and the last World Cup before the World Championships, an all-important Olympic qualification regatta in Aigbelet later in the year. So ahead of uh, the World Cup in Lucerne next week, we've seen a number of international crews. We saw the Australian men's eight here this morning for their first ever outing as uh, an Australian crew. And, and Napkova, this is a chance for her to race a very different style of event, but still get in um, some good quality racing ahead of that World Cup next week. So as we've said, she's desperately trying to find that same form, that same pace that she had at the London Olympic Games where she won the women's single skull. And if you are tuning into the sport for the first time and you like what you're seeing, and, and it is brilliant, isn't it? The sun shines out of the water. You've got amazing shots like that. Um, you might not know that the Czech Republic is one of the world's top nations in, in single sculling. Uh, not only do they have the Olympic champion in Mirka Natkova from 2012, but they also have the 2014 world champion, Andre Sinek, as uh, we ride there with uh, Dutch woman Janka van der Mullen, 28-year-old, who has kept focused. You can see the difficulty there, can't you, Sarah, with the water? Yeah, it is really very difficult. The boat's moving around quite a lot. Uh, it's so tough in the single skull uh, to have that feeling of the boat moving underneath you and to be able to control that and keep moving and keep balanced. Uh, Napkova is really doing a very good job of sitting back into the head breeze conditions. Uh, it's all about handling the conditions uh, that you're presented with on any given day. And Napkova, you can see that big sit back uh, that we might not see if she was racing in a tailwind condition, for example. Yeah. And uh, again, if you're watching this and for the first time, you know, this is all about strategy and tactics because uh, the Olympic champion who we're looking at now has won this race and she's just controlling the, her speed. And that means she's doing less strokes per minute than her opponent, which is one way the scholars can control their speed over this long distance. And we have been racing <laughs> for a while in the headwind, haven't we? So Natkova is really all about getting the best out of her technique controlling, conserving her energy for tomorrow's final. You can see her taking a little look around there. I'm sure she's thinking, where is this finish line? This race has been going for quite a while now in the strong head breeze conditions, but she's taken her rate down and looking very strong, very comfortable, looking to conserve at this point ahead of the final tomorrow. Do you think she can get close to Ken Crow, the uh, 2013 world champion from Australia? Look, it's hard to know. I think both of them are looking to find their peak form. Kimi uh, coming second last year at the World Championships to Emma Twig, who's not racing on the international stage this season, but will almost certainly be back in 2016. Nat Kova looking for the form she had at the Olympics in 2012. Kimi looking for the form she had at the World Championships in 2013, when she became world champion for the first time. So uh, almost certainly we will look at three women single scholars uh, from the Czech Republic, Australia and New Zealand in 2016, any of whom could take that gold medal. And I did hear that Karsten, the veteran Belarusian, of course, double Olympic champion in the single skulls, actually won the Hollenbecker last week in the single skull. Maybe she's fancying another go in that title. She's over 40 now, but uh, uh, Natkova was behind her in the World Cup racing in Bled. So the determination of this uh, woman who used to be a 1500 meter runner, she's actually quite slight. Uh, she's not at all big and muscly. She had the pace and endurance to uh, compete over 1500 meters. And uh, she managed to harness that to fantastic effect in 2011 and 2012. Won the world title in 2011, then came and blew everyone away at the Olympics. And she's desperate to get that form back this year. Very controlled race, very strong as she comes down towards the line now to take the semi-final in the Princess Royal Challenge. Looking forward to seeing the final tomorrow. So, Natkova crosses the line and we wait as the camera focuses on the check to see when Janka van der Moelen from the Netherlands, there she is, 
crosses the line, a race that she'll remember for a long, long time. She's raced the Olympic champion, but if nothing else, she was on the course, I would imagine, for something over eight minutes. We'll get the time check later on. So there's the result. Mirka Nakova of the Czech Republic beats Janka van der Moelen of the Netherlands.